had kept on going for a couple more hours, we might have been hurt. Uh, I don't think many of the soldiers were really worried about the outcome. Uh, I just wish this guy had come after us more often. Uh, it's a lot easier than going in after him. Mission this morning, moving back up in through the sector where the company came through yesterday. These Viet Cong are elusive. You can't see them. All you can do is hear the hear, hear the bullets as they come at you. We're spreading on the line here. The entire company spread out along the village. ago we were sitting in a rest period and one of the men commented on how day before yesterday they'd been sitting there at a rest period and thinking that they were just about to their main objective and would be through for the day when all of a sudden all hell broke loose and that's just exactly what has happened here today. Vietnam. United States helicopter gunships backed up ground forces in a strong assault on a Viet Cong position only three miles from Saigon's Tan Son Nut Air Base. U.S. and South Vietnamese forces headquarters are located on the airfield's perimeter. The communists had shoved the HQ and surrounding area with rockets and mortar bombs. Troops followed up the advantage gained by the air support to knock out the BC. The bitter fighting continues. But reports indicate that peace talks are still a possibility. Neither side relishes the prospect of indefinite hostilities, least of all the civilians who increasingly fall victim to the tragic horrors of the war that rages about them. Fighting soldiers from the sky Fearless men who jump and die Men who mean just what they say The brave men of the Green Beret Silver wing upon their chest These are men, America's best One hundred men We'll test today, but only three when the green beret trained to live off nature's land, trained in combat hand to hand, men who fight by night and day, courage take from the green beret. Silver wings upon their chest. These are men, America's best. One hundred men will test today. But only three win the green beret. Back at home, a young wife waits. Her green beret met his fate. He has died for those oppressed, leaving her this last request. Put silver wings on my son's chest. Make him one of America's best. machine gun over there and wept in front of us at Weppleton and one of the bullets caught me right there on the helmet it just glanced off but it never got in and uh, I thought it was coming through one day. My military occupation was with a, uh, a small detachment, self-contained detachment to uh, 
collect information on troop movement and weapon storage of uh, the North Vietnamese or the guerrilla fighter. So we would go to villages, very small villages, where we knew the army had already swept through. And we would go into these villages and take all the people and put them in a circle, make them all sit down. But in this village, we had no interpreter with us at the time, and the people don't understand English that much. So we would point with a weapon and tell them to sit, so they would sit. And we would go and pick one individual out of this stock and tie him to a tree and ask him, oh, what do you know about the VC? He just looked at us. He didn't know what to, what to think. He had never heard English. So that we would start torturing him. We would uh, start peeling his skin with bayonets and other knives we had for this purpose. And we would keep doing this, and he would cry out. And we would take a bucket of salt water from the ocean and throw on his wound. <coughs> and we would keep this up, and then we would go to an ear and cut an ear off. We did the same thing the SS did in World War II, but more no. brutal. We would use uh, tear gas, or we would use nerve gas for kicks. This officer that I was with, who was over us, he was the saddest. He liked to see people suffer, and this was his kicks he got out of life. He would do nothing to turn a 50 caliber machine gun on, on people and cut them down and then laugh about it. He wanted to go to the next village. This to him was nothing but a turkey shoot. Well, for one thing, we were in a happy position that he came after us for a change. The soldiers were dug in well. We have good weapons, the weapons performed well. We got all the ammunition we needed. Our communications were perfect. We had outstanding support from the artillery and the Air Force. Uh, they were responsive. Uh, I mentioned the other day, it was like one of these old John Wayne Indian movies. We were in a circle, and they just kept charging. They just kept getting killed. They had these young kids, about 15, 15 or 16. And they had a, a, like a leash around their neck, a big chain, you know? And they were chained to the uh, 50 caliber before they couldn't go anywhere. And, uh, the tripods on the thing, I'd say they weigh at least about 50 pounds or more. Uh, that's not including the, the gun itself. Oh, it looked like animals, you know? It looked like cattle or something. <laughs> To the American forces in South Vietnam, President Johnson gave the order, resume bombing. The South Vietnamese troops and the Americans welcomed renewed air support against the Red Guerrilla forces. Carrier-based bombers prepared for action immediately on receiving orders from Washington. All the U.S. forces knew that Viet Cong troops had infiltrated South Vietnam during the 37-day bombing truce. on the question of bombing, opinion is divided. At one extreme are those who claim it to be the complete answer to military problems. At the other, those who regard it as ineffective against guerrilla fighters. Say the Americans, by pounding away at the red supply lines, the Viet Cong will be brought to heel and the war won.